John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verses 23 through 28, provides us with yet another reason why Christ came to earth. John 12, 23 through 28. <clears throat> but Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, let him my father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Amen. Jesus came to earth to die. Jesus came to earth to die. This statement should mean something to us because each one of us is going to die. Each one of us is going to die. We will each have our appointed time, as Jesus says here. His appointed time. On two earlier occasions, John 7, 30 and John 8, 20, when Jesus was threatened with physical violence, people trying to kill Him, we read that His hour, His time, had not yet come. There was an hour or a time which was so monumental in the scope of Jesus' ministry that it could be called His time. His time. His hour. And our, our text tells us that His hour had now come. Verse 23, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Well, this was the hour of His suffering and His death. How do we know that? Well, in verses 23 through 25, after introducing the hour, He talks about dying and losing His life. Just feel with me how Jesus talks about His hour, His, his time. First of all, He, he, he talks about it in, in what seems to be a very positive attitude. In verses 24 and 25, He, he talks about the benefits of His death. He says, unless a, a seed falls to the ground and dies, it can't produce more fruit, but it remains alone. Right? You could take a a corn seed, and you could set it on your table. You could look at it, and it could be a beautiful seed, perfectly shaped, nothing wrong with it, but it's never going to do anything unless you put it in the ground and it dies, it decays. You, you dig up that corn, the root of that corn in the fall, and you won't find the seed. It'll be gone. Jesus says, unless I die, I won't bear fruit. But if I die, I'll bear much fruit. He's speaking positively, isn't he? And then he even calls his disciples to follow after him. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, that where I am, you may be also. But then, in verse 29, he speaks in what we might call a negative tone about his death. He says, Now my soul is troubled. Calvin says about this, and Granted, there might be some differences in translating his French or Latin into English, but what he says about this is that Christ confesses his cowardice. Certainly not saying anything impious against the Lord Jesus Christ, but he is saying what's, what's true in Jesus' reflection. My soul is troubled. And of course, this is just what we ought to expect. He knew that 
His hour would be dreadful on the one hand, and that it now was drawing near. It would be dreadful, and now it's drawing near. You see, this hour had been set from all eternity when the Father, the Son, and the Spirit counseled together to redeem a people for the praise of God. But when Jesus came to earth, it's as if the countdown began toward that dreadful time, that dreadful hour. It, it's partly why His humiliation begins at His incarnation. Because it makes concrete this counsel that would eventually lead to His death and suffering. It concretized the imminence of His suffering. Sort of like when, when you find out that you have to undergo a, a painful operation. You might find out about that eight months ahead of time. And if it's, it's a little scary when you find out, but it's eight months away, so you don't think about it that much. It doesn't weigh on you so heavily. But when you get admitted into the hospital on the day of your surgery, when you have to take off your regular clothes and put on that hospital gown, when you, when you get laid down in the bed, and especially when you get wheeled down the hallway to the operating room, it feels a lot different, doesn't it? There's an eminence. It's approaching. It's almost upon you. I wonder how many people who've been wheeled down on that bed have had second thoughts at that last moment before those operating doors shut. Well, Jesus here gives us a glimpse into his humanity. It's as if those doors of the operating room were opening and he was about to go in. He, he approaches his death as a man, as one of us. As, as you reflect on your own death, there's probably some uneasiness. And some people, even dear Christians who love the Lord dearly, when they get close to their hour, they fight. They resist. They're not at ease because death is such a violent rending of body and soul. Well, Jesus came to die, to know a real human fear of death. His soul was troubled. Please feel that. But notice also that Jesus doesn't shrink back. He didn't. He didn't say, yes, Father, save me from this hour. He asks it as a question. Shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? Surely he was thinking about it. His soul was troubled. But no, he, he doesn't shrink back. Why? Well, two reasons he gives. Two reasons. First of all, because this is why he had come. Father, shall I shrink back from this hour? No. This is the reason for which I've come. This is the hour for which I've come. This was his mission. He was reminding himself of his mission here. I suspect this happens a lot on, in military operations overseas where there's a group of men and women fighting in a brutal battle or maybe about to enter into a brutal battle where many of them will be lost, cut down in their youth. And the army captain gathers his troops around and says, listen, remember why we've come. Don't lose sight of why you're here right now. Yes, some of you will die, but here's why you're here. Remember the folks back home. Remember the people we're seeking to liberate. Remember your mission." Jesus here is rallying his own soul when he says, for this reason I have come. For this purpose I have come to this hour. He rallies his soul, reminding his, his own soul that he came to die for those who believe in 
Him, for those who have been given to Him from all eternity. But second, He rallies His soul as He thinks about His desire for His Father's glory. Father, glorify Your name. Receive all the glory from what I'm about to do. Just remember that. Born to die. Born to die. This should bring some gravity, some sobriety to our Christmas celebrations. Just think that Jesus is born, figuratively speaking, with a time bomb ticking in the shape of a cross. And as He gets closer to that cross, He reflects upon that more and more. And friends, we ought to think about that this season as well, that Jesus was born to die. 